Hello everyone and welcome to another video involving the newly repaired Packard Bell desktop PC from the Windows XP era. In case you missed my last video, I spent a while cleaning the inside of the PC after it was left unused for years, along with fixing some issues, most notably the overheating problems, which was totally a straightforward process and didn't involve any frustration or incompetence whatsoever. Anyway, in today's video I'll be installing a new 120GB solid state drive into this computer, along with installing my copy of Windows XP Home Edition on it, to replace the existing 22 year old hard drive. You may be thinking, this computer is over two decades old, how is a brand new SSD going to work in it? Well, that is where this SATA to IDE adapter comes in. Unfortunately though, before I've even started the video there is already a problem. The adapter seems to have been damaged in transit due to the complete and utter lack of packaging. Seriously, this adapter was packed in nothing but a small anti-static bag and a cardboard sleeve, meaning one of the pins on the board ended up getting damaged as it had punctured through the packing material. Nice job, Amazon. I'll still be testing the adapter in this video anyway to see if it works in the PC. Hope you enjoy. So, before I installed the SSD with the adapter, I wanted to run a quick speed test on the original hard drive that was already in the computer, along with viewing some information about it. Off camera, I used a USB drive to copy two programs over to the computer. These were Crystal Disk Info and Crystal Disk Mark. When opening Crystal Disk Info, it showed that to date, the hard drive had been powered on for a total of 15,000 hours. This drive has certainly seen plenty of use over the years. I'm honestly surprised it still works. You can see the drive is also running at full transfer speed supported by the motherboard, which is 100 megabytes per second on UDMA mode. Let's run Crystal Disk Mark to run a proper speed test on the drive. I was certain that the drive would not be very fast considering its age. I ran a 128 megabyte read-write test on the drive. And a few minutes later, the test completed and the final read-write speeds were both around 33 megabytes per second, which was actually quite surprising to me. I was thinking the transfer speed would be about half of that. Impressive. I'll compare these results with the SSD later on, but that's only if it works. Let's get it installed into the PC. So I began by making sure the PC was unplugged and then removed its side panel. I then removed the new SSD and adapter from their respective packaging, unplugged the power and IDE cables from the original hard drive and left it screwed into the case for now. I then plugged the power and IDE cables into the adapter. This is designed to allow you to connect SATA drives to an IDE interface, which is an ideal method of connecting a SATA drive to an old motherboard that only supports IDE, just like the motherboard in this PC. For reference, IDE, or PATA, is an old drive interface commonly used in PCs between the late 1980s and early 2000s. In this specific PC, large ribbon cables are used to read and write data from the drive that is plugged in. Meanwhile, SATA is a more modern interface that is still used in PCs today and has multiple form factors. This specific SSD I have here uses the 2.5 inch drive standard, with much smaller connectors compared to older drives that use the IDE interface. Anyways, after plugging the adapter in, I then inserted the SSD into the SATA slot on the adapter. There was nowhere to screw the SSD in the computer case, so I just let it stand on its side, making sure the adapter wasn't touching any metal parts of the case. I then plugged the PC into the wall and pressed the power button. A red light lit up on the adapter, and after pressing F2 to enter the BIOS, the new SSD was showing up in the list of drives. This was a good sign. And of course, when exiting the BIOS, the system couldn't boot as there was nothing installed on the SSD yet. Let's fix that. I got my copy of Windows XP Home Edition, got my copy of Windows XP Home Edition, inserted the cool holographic CD into the optical drive, and rebooted the computer. It then prompted me to boot from the CD, which then began loading the Windows setup. And then after a couple of minutes, setup prompted me to read the license agreement, which I obviously read word for word, as we all should. Totally. <clears throat> after pressing F8 to agree, it prompted me to set up a new partition. I didn't need to utilise all the space on the SSD, so I just made a 60GB partition for now. This can be changed later if necessary. After pressing the quick format option, the system took a few moments to format the SSD and then began copying setup files. So far, so good. Five minutes later, the setup finished copying and then the PC rebooted. However, when it tried to boot, it got stuck here, verifying DMI pool data. Usually you would only see this message briefly upon startup, if even at all, but the system was completely stuck here. Pressing keys made no difference whatsoever, and the hard drive light was actually stuck on, but dimmer than usual. 
I left the computer for a few minutes to see if anything would change, but nothing happened. So I pressed Ctrl to delete to reboot. And then the system started booting without getting stuck this time. Not sure what happened before, but whatever. The next stage of the setup continued, which went smoothly. Just a typical installation of Windows XP, with the usual language setup, admin setup, and product key entry. I did try using the product key label on the side of the computer case, but sadly it didn't work. It must be for a different version of Windows XP Home Edition. The version I'm trying to install is the original retail release from 2001, with no updates or service packs. I then entered the product key labelled on the back of my copy, and it worked just fine, after typing it correctly. Setup then continued for a further 10 minutes, and then the PC rebooted once again. However, it got stuck at the boot up process again, this time at a completely blank screen. Annoying. And this time, rebooting the system did not fix the problem. Instead, it got stuck at verifying DMI pool data again. After rebooting the system a couple more times, along with manually selecting the hard disk in the boot menu, which was actually the new SSD, the system then started booting just fine. Something weird was going on here. Why wasn't the system booting up consistently? I let the system continue to boot anyway and plugged in my PC speakers to see if the sound was working. Setup continued to the welcome screen, but sadly there was no setup music playing, which likely meant the sound drivers weren't installed. This is something I would need to fix later. After entering my name, setup was complete and the system booted into the Windows XP desktop. Using Windows on this new SSD felt very responsive. You could see that things loaded almost instantly. Definitely a better experience than the original hard drive. Unfortunately though, the display driver seemed to be missing, as the video performance was quite bad. Look at this lag when I drag this window. And when entering the device manager, it turned out that five drivers were not installed. This was probably because this version of Windows XP is two years older than the PC itself. I continued using the PC for now and decided to actually try running a speed test on the new SSD. However, the program crashed, and then the entire PC rebooted. This may have been because the program was only designed to run on Windows XP Service Pack 2, which I had not installed yet. Annoyingly, this meant the system had more trouble booting again. After rebooting another few times, it eventually fixed the problem and it booted up again. But this was becoming a major issue as the PC was just becoming more annoying to work with. Nobody wants to use a PC that can only boot after restarting it five times in a row. Weirdly though, once it was booted up, it ran completely fine once again. My guess was that the adapter was often having trouble powering the SSD initially, causing the system to hang when it tried to boot. But I wasn't completely sure yet. I decided to power off the computer and troubleshoot the problem. I did some research online and found that other people have run into a similar problem with different computers where the PC would get stuck at verifying DMI pool data upon startup. Some users stated that removing the BIOS battery could help as it would clear the BIOS settings. So I unplugged the PC from the wall, removed the BIOS battery, there we go. and after a few minutes I plugged the PC back in. After pressing the power button, the BIOS loaded default settings. I pressed F1 to continue and the system proceeded to hang at the exact same part. However, it now said update success, so maybe the system was hanging just after the verifying part. I unplugged the PC again and reinserted the battery. I also tried reinserting the power and data cables into the adapter, as well as reinserting the SSD into the adapter. Maybe something was plugged in wrong? I plugged the PC in, turned it on, and of course it made no difference. And the PC eventually booted into Windows after rebooting a few more times, just like before. And I forgot to reset the time and date after reinserting the BIOS battery, so the clock was set back to New Year's Day 2002. This turned out to be a massive mistake, as when I fixed the date upon next startup, the system then thought I'd been using Windows without activation for over 23 years. And Windows XP does not let you use it if you don't activate it within 30 days. I didn't really want to activate Windows on a PC that was booting inconsistently. So, I ended up reformatting the SSD entirely and redoing the Windows XP setup. 
making a smaller 40 gigabyte partition instead of 60 gigabytes like before to see if maybe this could fix the random issues when booting. About 20 minutes later, setup completed, the PC restarted, and the exact same issue persisted. And I could boot into Windows eventually after restarting the PC five more times, which allowed me to finish the Windows setup, but I still did not want to use the PC with these inconsistent boot problems. And not long later, when trying to start the PC, I got this error message. The file was missing or corrupt, even though it was present on the drive. And then when rebooting the PC again, it started up completely fine without complaining about any missing files. What was all that about? At this point, I had determined that something was clearly wrong with the SATA to IDE adapter. It seemed it was not always providing enough power to the SSD on startup, causing it not to boot. Most of the time. Otherwise, it would boot just fine. Of course, there was also a bent jumper pin on the adapter due to poor packaging, and there were likely other areas of the adapter that were also damaged. So, I ended up returning the adapter, getting a refund, and looked for other options. I then came across a StarTech adapter, which was twice the price of the original adapter, but it had thousands of positive ratings. So I ordered it. And here it is. I was already more impressed with the packaging and the overall presentation compared to the previous adapter. It was even packaged in anti-static bubble wrap inside the box. I took the adapter out of the packaging, inserted the power and data cables, and inserted the SSD. I plugged the PC into the wall, turned it on, oh, damn it. and it just booted, with no issues whatsoever and Windows seemed to be running perfectly stable. I rebooted another few times just to be sure, and the PC booted fine each time. Perfect. And this is why it's a better idea to go for the more premium but trusted solutions if possible. Otherwise, if you try a solution that's a bit too cheap, you might end up wasting time and money, like I did. Anyway, now that this adapter nonsense was seemingly over, I then proceeded to install Service Pack 2. I went on my main PC, found an archive for Service Pack 2 online, and downloaded the installer. I then copied it to a USB drive, and when that completed, I plugged the USB drive into the Packard Bell PC, ran the installer, and waited a long time for the installer to extract files. Yeah, I really should have copied the installer to the SSD first and then ran it, as the USB ports on this PC are USB 1.1, with a max transfer speed of 1.5 megabytes per second. Yes, quite pathetic, but that probably would have been plenty over two decades ago when this PC was new. Anyway, once the files were extracted, I then ran the setup and let it install for a few minutes. And then when that completed, the setup prompted me to restart the computer. And here you can see the boot up screen has changed. It turns out that Microsoft changed the boot up screen in Service Pack 2, making it universal between different versions of Windows XP. Windows then asked me to enable automatic updates, which I decided to turn off for now as the PC was not connected to the internet. Yet. Windows then booted to the desktop, and I checked to see if the display driver was installed, and there it was! Service Pack 2 contained the driver for the NVIDIA GeForce 2 integrated graphics, which fixed the lag problems when dragging window contents around. Excellent. I also checked to see if any other drivers were installed, and sadly the audio drivers were still missing, along with the Ethernet and SM bus drivers. Not as important, but could still do with them. I then decided to run a speed test on Crystal Dismark. I ran a 1GB test, which was different from the original test I ran on the hard drive, but never mind. And you can see that the new SSD was much quicker, over twice as fast as the original hard drive. And to my surprise, the write speed was higher than the read speed. Interesting. Of course, the actual transfer speed of this SSD would be much faster if it was installed in a modern system. It is advertised to have a transfer speed of nearly 500 megabytes per second, but this old PC only supports a maximum of 100 megabytes per second through the IDE interface, which is why the SSD is running slower. But in all fairness, these transfer speeds are still plenty for Windows XP, and as discovered previously, load times are noticeably improved. Oh, and something I forgot to do earlier was check out the system information. This confirmed that the system was running Service Pack 2. However, this was not the latest Service Pack. I still needed to download Service Pack 3, which was released in 2008, and it contains more updates and patches for Windows XP. 
So, I went on my main PC once again, downloaded Service Pack 3 from the Microsoft Update Catalog. Yes, they still host downloads for Windows XP as of 2025. And then I copied the installer to the USB drive once again. When this was finished, I plugged the drive into the Packard Bell PC, made sure to copy the installer to the SSD this time, which took 5 minutes because of USB 1.1, and then I ran the installer. This time it barely took 30 seconds to extract files. Much better. And after Service Pack 3 installation was complete, the PC rebooted again, and then I checked System Info, and there it was. Service Pack 3 was now installed. I checked Device Manager again to see if any more drivers were installed, and sadly the same three drivers were still missing. I would need to find these drivers elsewhere. But for now, I'm going to end this video here. I've successfully managed to get an SSD installed into this 22 year old PC with an adapter, along with getting Windows XP installed and updated to Service Pack 3. There were some issues along the way, but that was my fault for trying to save money and buying a cheap adapter thinking it would work just fine. The replacement StarTech adapter proved to be a much better solution in the end, and Windows XP is running perfectly stable on an SSD. In the next video, I'll be attempting to connect this Packard Bell PC to the internet using a USB wireless adapter, along with installing missing drivers and updates. And of course, you can expect to see more technical issues and things going wrong when that video comes out. And until then, thank you for watching and see you next time.